Good morning, y'all. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> I ain't messing with y'all. Uh, God bless y'all. Uh, one day at a time, little by little. Keep that in mind. Not everything going to be done for you, all right, at one time. <laughs> you got to take the good with the bad, brother, sister. <laughs> you can't have one without the other, all right? Ups without downs, fouls without free throws, uh, daytime without nighttime, all right? You experience this every 24 hours, 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night. <laughs> sometimes things going to look sunny and bright, and sometimes they not. <laughs> it's going to be dark moments in your life sometimes. Uh, I love the fact only stars shine at night. I love that. <laughs> That's the only time you can see stars shining is at night. Yeah, you could be one of them stars shining ever so bright if you allow the process to do what God intends for it to do. You can't run away from dark moments. A lot of people don't want to go through nothing. I don't like going through nothing, but you must go through it. Yeah, that's the only way to get through it. David said, even though I walked through the shadow of the valley of death, you hear me? He had to go through something, damn. You got to go through something. You want to shine and be one of them stars shining ever so bright, <laughs> all right? I know it's not pleasant. It's painful. But you're going to get through it. Watch. And when you get through it, you're going to thank God that you went through it, all right? Watch. It might not make sense to you, but it, it makes perfect sense to him. It's the reason for the dark moments, all right? You just keep on breathing. Inhale and exhale. All right? <laughs> I have confidence that the Lord... He who started a good work gonna continue. You hear me? You just hold on to him and you're gonna shine so bright. All right, watch. All glory, honor, and praise go to my Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Gotta give credit, honor, and glory to who is due. Amen. Uh, whatever today is. Uh, Tuesday, November 14, uh, 427 a.m., 2023. <laughs> I love to be up while everyone else is asleep. <laughs> you ain't got you one of these. You should have got you one to read. It's a nice packet. You got to wait till I get some more. It's a nice packet called Knowledge from uh, God Almighty, Volume 1, by some brother named Devontae Farm. Pretty cool book. Uh, cool name. But don't no book replace the Bible. <laughs> tell you that. You're never going to get step two until you take step one. Step one, taking God at his word. Everything you need, can need, and will need is something in God's word and in God's word alone. You hear me? I love that. Mm. Well, you know, I don't care what book you got. Every, everything you need is in the Bible. You hear me? That's the truth. <laughs> if there's any truth in any books, they're going to point you to the Bible. You hear me? I love to read the Holy Quran. That is the Word of God, and it lines up with the Bible. It points you to it, all right? <laughs> uh, the few books I like to read, uh, they point you to the Bible, all right? If, I'm telling you, <laughs> you're never going to get step two until you take step one. Step one, taking God at His Word, Okay. So if you ain't got a Bible, I highly advise you to get you one of them. <laughs> All right? You need one. <laughs> Don't just have it to sit and read, feed off of it. You need to feed off the Word. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't just read it. Do it. Do what the Word tells you to do. <laughs> All right? Um, so if you're a new reader, get you an NIV, a new international version, because it's more easy for you to read. That's my advice to you to get an NIV version. Is it For a beginner, that's what you want to start off with. All right? Second thing. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I don't try to be. There's only one person who is perfect, who walked this earth perfectly. His name was Jesus Christ of Nazareth, born of a virgin, mother named Mary uh, from Nazareth. Unless that's you, which I highly doubt, brother, sister, you ain't perfect. God ain't created you to be perfect. Uh, the Lord ain't looking for perfection, but devotion. Do you hear me? I love the fact. Uh, your worst day, if you're devoted to the Lord, your worst day is as good as your best day. If you're truly devoted to the Lord, man, I'm telling you, that's what he wants. I like what Stephen A. said. The best ability is availability. He's talking about sports, but that's what God looking. For. That is what God looking for. You hear people who make themselves available from the heart. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. A lot of people don't make themselves available. They try to sugarcoat it, dress it up, do this and do Millions, millions of people go to church on Sunday and Saturday, the synagogue on Saturday. They, they never make their hearts available. <laughs> Jesus said, these people worship me with their mouths, but their hearts are far from me. Listen to me. I don't care what situation or condition you are in. <laughs> Straight, gay, crooked, drunk, sober, uh, you strung out on drugs. I don't care what you got going on. If you make yourself available from your heart each and every single day, <laughs> God is going to take you shape you and use you fix you from the inside out one day at a time little by little keep that in mind all right i'm telling you though god love that he, he knows he know it's a struggle down here for us and we not he know our situation our framework we in the world full of sin that's currently ran by satan you know it ain't no excuse to to 
be down, you know, because you, you know if you know who the Lord is, you're gonna want to strive. To, you're gonna want to strive to be the best person you could be. You hear me? Word. Even even though you're messing up, you still gonna want to strive. Press on. You hear me? Don't beat yourself up because you're messing up. You just keep on pressing on and making yourself available from the heart. <laughs> now I'm telling you, God gonna take you and use you. God bless anybody think they got it more than Paul. Paul Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament. <laughs> Paul said things I want to do, I don't. The things I don't want to do, I keep on doing. But in my inner being, in his heart, he delight in God's law, his word. That's it. You hear me? He keep on making. He he kept on making himself available from the heart. That's what the Lord looking for, man. I'm telling you. And when you do that, watch what the Lord do for you. All right. So you just keep on breathing and keep on making yourself available. And God bless you, brother, sister. Third thing. It ain't no third thing. If you're watching on my Facebook channel, like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Word. And send videos out. Download the video. That'd be a smart thing to do. Word. Because. That'd be highly smart for you to do. <laughs> but like, type in my name, Devontae Farmer. Some, some dude holding the Bible should pop up. All right. Where? Don't everyone, it's not a lot of people be on Facebook. But everyone got YouTube. You can send a job to anybody. All right. So I do that. If you're on my YouTube channel, I got a few videos on the Facebook Facebook junk that, that ain't on here that you want to go get before they take it off. Or where? All right. Type in my name, Devontae Farmer, and get the videos off of my other channel. All right. But, uh, Guess I'm just gonna go on in. <laughs> All right, God bless y'all. Yeah, you know I, I take uh, it's a blessing. Uh, I, I thank the brother. He talked to me the other day. I met him on. I was walking from the store, dude. I appreciate everyone who truly pay attention and and for their words of encouragement. It don't be many people, but for the for the one or two people who say, I, I know I could I could feel I could feel people's hearts when they truly encouraged, you know what I mean? And when they tell me, thank you, young brother, this and that, for saying, doing that, I appreciate you, Mr. B. Word. I, I, I appreciate all the words of encouragement. It was a young brother yesterday who uh, I gave a book to a few weeks ago. It was, he, he, he said he just started to read it. He said he, said he got pain or something in his body. And when, he, when he started to read it, he says pain started to go away. He's he been feeling good ever since. I, I went up the street and talked to them young boys. A few days ago, word, and uh, like word, dude said even things been going on for him. Uh, I like to hear stuff like that because I know, I know, I know it's power in God's word. For anyone who truly receive God's word, I know it's, it's a it's a life changing effect. It is a powerful, it's a powerful effect, and it will benefit your life for the people who truly do receive. <laughs> where not everyone receive it. Jesus was right here with the people, and, and they rejected him. But for the people who truly do receive God's word, I'm telling you, and I like that. That's that, that that's the reason I live. I live for that man. I, I gladly, I will gladly give my life <laughs> if I can help just one person change their life around and come and feel and not feel how they feel. I gladly give my life. Yeah, <laughs> right. For for the few people who I know the Lord gonna change and help out, I live for those moments, man. I don't give a damn about money. <laughs> That don't change. That don't do nothing for me, bro. I done had money. I done been places people ain't gonna get to go to. Mm. Hey, girlfriends, this and that. I'm telling you, I can get married to this Ethiopian junk. I know what it's like to, to be with women. You know what I mean? Pretty women. Mm. Word. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a bad look. I, it's pretty women. Do you hear me? That don't, that don't do nothing for me. Word, people, y'all set up for less. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, word, I don't know what, what <laughs> you see what I'm saying, but Stuff people go for and get a kick out of, it don't do nothing for me. When I see someone's life being helped, that do something for me, man. That's what I live for. You hear me? That's that's what make my heart go. <laughs> the, the, don't nothing else really affect me. The, the one thing for the past 10 years, the thing that made me feel good was taking care of my great grandma. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and making sure my two little brothers are. Right. They're not little no more. <laughs> They're young men. You see what I'm saying? It, once you're not a kid no more, you, you kind of old, you can make your own choice. You're not a kid no more. You see what I'm saying? But all right, I, I, get, I get joy and I to make sure the, the children was art and my grandma was art. So I'm saying that, that's what I live for. <laughs> I don't live for to make money, music, <laughs> to this and that. I don't give a damn about doing all the stuff that people care about, bro. That don't, boy, that don't bring me no joy. You know what I'm saying? Well, God bless y'all. I'm picking up where I left off. Genesis uh, 41, I believe. Yeah, Genesis 41, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we was uh, talking about Joseph. Uh, my man Joseph, <laughs> he helped out two. He, he helped out one person with a dream. He told, he, he inter God gave, God gave him 
two people had a dream, and God allowed Joseph to interpret it for them. <laughs> and uh, the cupbearer dude forgot about Joseph. <laughs> now, Joseph, everything Joseph was doing, he was doing right, but stuff kept on going wrong for him. You know what I mean? It'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> That's how it looked like. But God got it. When God execute what he wants to execute, is going to be perfect. You hear me? <laughs> I know you might want to get out of what you're in right now. Hey, I do too. You might have been five, ten years somewhere. You know what I mean? Joseph was sold out by his brothers. Ended up in Potiphar's house and treated him good. Blessed his house. And Potiphar's wife tried to come on to Joseph. And she lied on him because he didn't want to sleep with him. And Joseph was, was a God friend, honorable man. And uh, Potiphar knew this. But he, he ended up letting Joseph. He put Joseph in the prison. Joseph ended up in the prison. Well... And he took this cupbearer and, and the baker. They had two dreams. And Joseph interpreted the dreams. He was in prison for two years. <laughs> All right. Listen, he, do, he did a lot of time sitting. <laughs> okay. I'm sure it worked. But God was working with him the whole time and working on him the whole time. You hear me? <laughs> God's time is perfect. I love this. Uh, Genesis 41, verse 1. The title say Pharaoh's dreams. It say, Genesis 41, verse 1 say, when two full years had passed, you see, Joseph did two years sitting in jail for nothing. Swear. <laughs> because he did the right thing. Some of y'all go to jail for the wrong thing. Joseph did the right thing, ended up in jail. <laughs> God allowed it because God got a plan for him. Some of y'all might be incarcerated or somewhere uh, unjustly, but God got a plan. You can't see it. That's why you need to hold on to God instead of Joseph. Listen. <laughs> When two full years passed by, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing by the Nile when out of the river came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed them on the reeds. After them, seven other cows, ugly and gaunt, came up out of the Nile and stood, stood beside those on the, on the riverbank. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven cows that were sleek and fat. Then Pharaoh woke up. Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing on the Nile, on the Nile River. Uh, when out of the river, seven cows popped up, sleek and fat. These were healthy, good-looking cows. Okay? And then after them, seven other cows popped up, ugly and gaunt. These were some ugly, nasty look, ugly, nasty, nasty looking cows. They came up out the Nile and stood beside the and stood beside those on the riverbank. And the cows that were ugly and nasty ate up the seven cows that were healthy and good. <laughs> Pharaoh fell asleep. He fell asleep again and had a, and had a second dream. Seven heads of grain. Uh, wheat, seven heads of grain, healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other grain, seven other heads of grain sprouted, thin and scorched by the east wind. The, the thin heads, uh, the thin heads of grain, uh, swallowed up the seven healthy ones, uh, the seven healthy foreheads. Then Pharaoh woke up. It had been a dream. The same thing happened in his dream. Pharaoh had another dream where he saw seven heads of grain, healthy, growing up on a single stalk. And after that, seven other heads of grain sprouted, thin, which, is, which means they're not healthy, thin and scorched by the east wind, sprouted up. But the thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy ones. First, the seven ugly, first the seven ugly cows ate up the seven healthy cows. Then the seven heads of grain that was ugly and thin ate up the seven healthy ones. Pharaoh had two dreams with the same meaning. He had two different dreams, but the same meaning in each one. God the one giving Pharaoh these dreams. Here, <laughs> Listen, I, I, I like that. The first dream, seven ugly cows ate up the seven healthy cows. The second dream, the seven ugly heads ate up the seven healthy heads. Two different dreams, but the same meaning in both. Listen. In the morning, uh, in the morning, his mind was troubled. So he sent for all the magicians and the wise men of Egypt. 
Pharaoh told them his dream, but no, but no one could interpret them for him. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, Today I am reminded of my shortcomings. Joseph told this dude two years ago. <laughs> uh, Joseph told this dude two years ago. Uh, he said, man, he said, uh, he said in verse chapter 40, uh, verse 14, when all goes well, if you remember me and show me kindness, man, mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. <laughs> Why? He told the cupbearer, dude, tell Pharaoh, it was two years ago that I'm in here, man. Talk to him. I can't talk to him. Tell him that I'm bored. You know what I mean? But anyway, I told you, God's timing is perfect. You hear me? God gave Pharaoh, the king, of, the king of Egypt, a dream. You hear me? Listen. Then the chief, verse 9, 41, chapter 41, verse 9. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, today I am reminded of my shortcomings. Pharaoh was once angry with his servants. And he imprisoned me and the chief baker in, in the house of the captain of the guard. Each of us had a dream the same night. And each dream had a, had a meaning of his own. Now, a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams and things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position and the other man was impaled. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one can interpret it. But I but I have heard that but I've heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I love the fact God will give listen. God will give people dreams and God will allow some people to interpret the dream. They're not practicing this though. You hear me? Listen to Joseph's words. I love the next words Joseph's about to say. Because some people take things a whole different other route. <laughs> they want to be mediums and spiritualists and fortune tellers. <laughs> that's not a business. That, that's not no business business God ever said set up. <laughs> you hear me? God don't play them games, okay? God will allow people to interpret dreams specifically for at a specific time for a specific reason. They're not practicing this stuff. Hmm. I love Joseph's words. A true man of God or a true woman of God who the Lord is using, this is this is what they're going to say. Hmm. Listen to what Pharaoh said. Hmm. Pharaoh said, I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Listen to Joseph. I cannot do it. Hmm. Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God We'll give Pharaoh the answer he desires. I love that. Pharaoh, Joseph said, I can't, I don't have the power to do this on my own. But if God, but if God allowed me to do it, he'll give you a, he'll give you the interpretation. You hear me? I love what Joseph said. He said, it's not me. I can't do nothing. It's all God who, it's all God who uh, will allow me to interpret it. You hear me? He'll give you the answer. Most people, they take credit. There's a whole lot of people that take the credit and want to do this and do that. Yeah, I can do this. Yeah, I know how to do this. Man, you don't know how to do a damn thing. God and God alone is the only one who can interpret dreams. And if he, allow, if he give you the wisdom to interpret something at a specific time for a specific reason, then good. All glory, honor, praise go to my father. Joseph ain't set up no fortune hotline thing. All right? So you stay away from the people who think they psychics or whatever because they're not right. All right? I don't care how good they look or whatever. I'm just me letting you know. All right. But anyway, Joseph said, I cannot do it. Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Amen? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, in my dream, I was standing on the Nile of the river. I was standing on the bank of the Nile when out of the river, there came seven cows, uh, fat and sleek, and they grazed among the reeds. After them, seven other cows came up, scrawny and very ugly and lean. I had never seen such ugly, ugly cows in all the land of Egypt. The lean, ugly cows ate up the seven fat cows that came up first. But even after they ate them, no one could tell that they had, but even after they ate them, no one could tell that they had done so. They look just as ugly as before. Then I woke up. In my dream, I saw seven heads of grain, full and good, growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads sprouted, 
weathered and thin and scorched by the east wind. Um, the thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven good the good heads. I told this to the magicians, but none of them could explain it to me. <laughs> then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven lean, ugly cows that came up after the seven, uh, the seven lean, ugly cows that came up afterward are seven years, and so are the seven worthless heads of grain, scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is just set. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but, but seven years of famine will, will follow them. Then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that swallows it will be so severe because the famine The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it will be so severe. All right. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God and God will do it soon. And now let Pharaoh look for discerning and wise men and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land, over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should collect all the good. They should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain un, under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for, for food. This food should be held in reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt. So, so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. So Pharaoh asked them. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the spirit of God? <laughs> then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you. <laughs> I love the fact that Joseph said to Pharaoh, look for a discerning and wise man <laughs> and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. <laughs> <You hear me? laughs> Joseph telling him, man, find somebody who can do these things, Pharaoh. He tell him what I'm about to tell you to do. Find somebody. Mm. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, listen, for everything you said made make perfect sense. <laughs> the plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. Mm. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the spirit of God? Mm. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise, and wise as you. <laughs> you shall be in charge of my palace, and all my people are to submit to your orders. <laughs> Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. <laughs> I love that right there. <laughs> Joseph in charge of Egypt. <clears throat> so Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Huh? <laughs> then Pharaoh took the signet ring from off his finger. And put it on Joseph's finger. <laughs> Pharaoh took the ring off of his finger. And put it on his, and put it on Joseph's finger. <laughs> I, I, I would love to see it. <laughs> Boy, the, listen, that, that signet ring special. <laughs> I'd love to see it. <laughs> listen, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, I, I love the fact. I love the fact that if you a man in charge or a woman in charge and you recognize that God got somebody around who had, who who he has given divine authority to, <laughs> you hear me? Pharaoh was no idiot. This Pharaoh was no idiot. The next Pharaoh, the, the, the next, this Pharaoh died, and then another Pharaoh came and put the children in, in, in Exodus. That's a whole different other Pharaoh who came and he died. This, this Pharaoh died. Another Pharaoh, a Pharaoh came and took place of Egypt that didn't know nothing about Joseph. <laughs> he didn't fear God. But this Pharaoh right here, he feared God. Do you hear me? I love that. I love that. This is a Pharaoh in Egypt. All right? I don't know who this Pharaoh is, but whoever this Pharaoh is right here, he in heaven. Hmm. 
I'm, I'm telling you this. I you know that Devonta. He was he, he fear God. Same as that way, uh, right here. <laughs> she feared the Lord. When, when them two spies came in, she submitted to them. <laughs> All right, she ain't do them no harm. All right. <laughs> this Pharaoh right here, this dude is intelligent. He's smart. He recognized the presence of God. Even better, <laughs> he gave up his power and put Joseph in charge. Listen to what I'm saying. This dude recognized. Any, any any man that's in position and got title, or a woman in command and got position and title, and if you recognize who God is using and submit to them and let them do what they let them do what God wants them to do, and you just back off, that is wisdom right there. Because most people they gonna want to do this and do that. Pharaoh is the king of Egypt, damn it. He ain't gotta listen to nobody. Do you hear? He could easily said, nah, this and that way and went somewhere else with it, as many people do. There's many people in the churches and they said they don't got a lick of sense when God tells them to do something. God has sent somebody to you to, to save your damn church, to save what you got going on. But no, you want to keep on doing things your damn way. But watch what happened. This Pharaoh right here, this dude is smart. Do you hear me? He submitted to Joseph. Put him in charge. That's what you're supposed to do. When God uses somebody, you put them in charge. If you want to save yourself and save your community, you listen, you listen to the man of God or the woman of God. You hear me? Don't, don't get carried away doing your own damn things. You're going to ruin yourself, especially if God sends somebody to you. I, I, I can't wait to meet this dude right here. I'm going to meet him. When, I, when we get to heaven, I, I'm 100% sure he in there. 100% sure. Yeah. A lot of people talk about Egypt, this and that. Egypt is... Uh, where a lot of BS stuff happened at. But once upon a time, listen to me, just like Rome. Uh, Rome, man, once upon a time, God was in these places. You hear me? His power was in these places. You hear me? But just like a lot of things, when you remove God out and you, people do what they want to do, people get carried away and things go left really quick. <laughs> yeah. Joseph was in Egypt. He was in charge of Egypt. You don't see these stories or talk about, do you? Nah, you see the stories about the rest of the people, this and that. Joseph was in Egypt at one point in time, damn it. It's in the Bible. <laughs> he was in charge of Egypt. You hear me? And whoever, the, and whoever this Pharaoh is, I wish I knew. You hear me? Whoever this Pharaoh is at this point in time, submitted to Joseph <laughs> and submitted to God. I'm telling you, that's amazing. Because <laughs> they don't tell you this or talk about this. They talk about all the rest of the people in Egypt. But they don't, they, don't, they don't mention this. <laughs> Joseph was in Egypt at one point in time. Yeah. That's what I'm reading from. And whoever this Pharaoh is, he put Joseph in charge of the whole land. This dude is smart. <laughs> so Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land uh, of Egypt. <laughs> then, Pharaoh, then Pharaoh took his signet ring from off his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes, a fine lining, and put a gold chain around his neck. Decked him out. <laughs> ain't, in, ain't in that dungeon no more. Yeah. <laughs> Joseph! <laughs> I like that. All praise go to my father in heaven. Yeah. All praise go to God. <laughs> my father, Allah. Bless, bless the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> And the sweet Holy Spirit. Pharaoh said, This man has a spirit of God. <laughs> Who that's, did Pharaoh not say that? <laughs> Who can we find? <laughs> Pharaoh said himself in verse 38. So Pharaoh said, Can we find anyone like this man in whom is the spirit of God? <laughs> the spirit of God was with Joseph. <laughs> yeah, the Father is telling the Holy Ghost. You hear me? I love that. <laughs> All praise go to my Father. You hear me? And this story, Joseph is an excellent story about Jesus. It's a many representation of, of how the Lord used Jesus to save. God used Joseph to save the, his people and the place, that, the, in the land at one point in time. <laughs> Same exact way how the Lord used Jesus. Yeah, our father used to send Jesus to save his people and to save the world. God so loved the world that he sent Jesus, his one and only son. I'm telling you, this right, man, this it's an excellent story and an excellent mini rep mini representation of Jesus. Yeah, you see the father, all prayers go to the father. Yeah, Joseph said, I can interpret dreams, but God can. The father, Joseph is a mini representation of Jesus. 
here, you see the sun? And Pharaoh, Pharaoh himself said, and whom can we, is, can, who can we find and one who is the spirit of God? Listen, read the verses, verse 38. So Pharaoh asked, can we find anyone like this man? One in whom is the spirit of God? And you, you see it, don't you? <laughs> I love this man. Oh yeah, Pharaoh, Pharaoh uh put put him in dressed him in fine linen <laughs> and put a gold chain around his neck. I, I, I ain't in a dungeon no more, baby. <laughs> put that gold chain around his neck. Yeah. Uh he had him ride in a chariot as a second in command. <laughs> and people shouted before him, make way. <laughs> Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift up. I told you, this Pharaoh right here is smart and highly intelligent. <laughs> Why are you saying Devontae? Because he recognized the power of God that he get that he gave to somebody. He Pharaoh. He ain't gotta do a damn thing. You hear him? When you in position and in control, <laughs> whoever you is, you could be the president or whoever. You ain't gotta do a damn thing nobody say. <laughs> But the president, they got he. It's a branch of government. You gotta listen to the three, the two other branches. I I can't use him because he he don't really run the world where he controlled by the people. But the pharaoh, he had to listen to a damn thing. You hear me? He could have easily said, made did things his way. I'm telling you, for anyone who's listening, if you if you got a position or a title, I'm telling you. And you see, and you see a man of God or a woman of God, and you recognize and you submit to them. You want the smartest people a laugh. Cause you do you know how many people that got position and title and they just get carried away? They don't they don't listen to the Lord, this and that. They do what they want to do. Well, live your damn life and see if, see how far you're gonna get. Enjoy it. You see what I'm saying? Can nobody tell you nothing? You know what I mean? Pharaoh, them he was the king, he was the king over Egypt. What'd he do? Submitted to Joseph? Smart. I can't wait to meet this brother. Highly intelligent. He wasn't intelligent as far as what his own. He was intelligent because he recognized and feared God and submitted to God. You hear me? Listen to what the Pharaoh said. Pharaoh said, I, I am Pharaoh. He said, I'm Pharaoh. He, listen to what he said to Joseph. I'm Pharaoh. But without your word, without without your word, because your word is as good as God's word. Huh? Without I'm Pharaoh, damn it. But without, without your word, nobody's gonna lift their hand or foot in Egypt. I love that right there. Damn it. Forgive me, Lord, but I love this. Uh, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift hand or foot in Egypt. Pharaoh gave Joseph the name Zeph, 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 Zeph and gave him Asenath, daughter of Potiphria, Potiphria, uh, priest of On, uh, to be his wife. And Pharaoh gave him Asenath, daughter of Potiphria, the priest of On, to be his wife. And Joseph went throughout the land of Egypt. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of hmm, Jesus began his ministry at 30. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered uh, the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout throughout Egypt. And Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plenty, plentiful. Joseph collected all the good food, collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt. <clears throat> And stored and stored it in the cities. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. <laughs> before the years of famine came, before the years, before the years of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph by Asenath. As by Asenath, daughter of Potiphria, priest of On. Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, 
It is, it is because God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. I like that name. Manasseh. Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, it is because God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's house and all my father's household. Hmm. I like that name. I got to take that name if I have a son because the Lord made me forget all my trouble. I like that name right there. I love what Joseph said. Hmm. He named his firstborn Manasseh and said, it is because God has made me forget all my trouble. <laughs> Everything I went through, man, from being sold out for my brothers, being this place, this place, God made, God made me forget all my troubles, and he blessed me. I love that right there. I love that right there. I love that, man. I'm going to use that if I find If you give me a son or something, I'm going to use that. It is because God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. Amen. The second son he named Ephraim and said, It is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. <laughs> Amen. The seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began. Just as Joseph, just as Joseph had said, there was famine in the land, there was famine in all the other lands. But in the whole land of Egypt, there was food. When all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food. Then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go to Joseph and do what he tells you. <laughs> Pharaoh's so smart, man. Pharaoh's so smart. You're, when you got the man of God right there, damn it, you go. To, you go I, he, Pharaoh said at the beginning, nobody going to lift a hand or foot without your words, Joseph. The people come to me, they know where to come to him, Pharaoh. And I'm sending right to you, because you know what to do. I don't know what to do, but you know what to do. <laughs> hey, as long as you know what to do, I know what to do. Because what I'm going to do is what you do. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm listening to the man of God. I don't give a damn what the problem is. Y'all go to Joseph. <laughs> Good thing you came to me, but I'm sending you to Joseph, because Joseph know what to do. <laughs> well, Pharaoh could have easily did this or did that. Go to Joseph. I, he ain't changed what he as long as, you, as long as you submit to God and to his people. You can't go wrong, man. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Even if it's the situation, you cannot go wrong. I love, I, man, I can't wait to meet this brother right here. All right, I, I, I love it, man. I love it. The people, the people is crying out to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, y'all go to Joseph. Joseph probably got it worked out for you. <laughs> Through God. Yeah. <laughs> then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph and do what he tells you. <laughs> when a famine has spread it, when a famine has spread over the whole country, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians. For the famine was severe throughout Egypt, uh, and all the world came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph. <laughs> At one point in time, everyone in the whole world <laughs> came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph. <laughs> they don't tell you that in the Egyptian uh, text. Yeah, I ain't found that. I ain't found that in the Texas yet, but it's in the Bible. You know, they don't they don't want to let you know certain things, this and that. It's in the Bible, though. Yeah, I have not seen that over in Egypt yet, but I'm quite sure it must be a record somewhere. It got to be a record somewhere. It probably one of them. It, it might have been in, in that library of Alexandria, I believe, that was burned up and destroyed. You think you think I know nothing about that, bitch? Yeah, but I do. <laughs> yeah, they, they 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 a lot of stuff has been burned up and destroyed. You know what I mean? They don't want people to know what God been doing. I told you at one point in time, Rome was the the Roman Catholic Empire was the greatest empire of the world. Currently, the Roman Empire is ran by the Pope. Yeah, the, the Pope, that's 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 the Roman Catholic Empire. The, the Catholic Church is the Roman Catholic Church. It's, they just took off Roman. It's the Catholic Church. But it's the Roman Catholic Church, okay? <laughs> it, yeah, that, that's what it is. The Roman Catholic Church. At, the first, at one point in time, it was the strongest empire of the world. Why? Because a man named Constantine the Great. God was at the God was at the base of the, of the Roman Empire at one point in time. Do you hear me? I'm telling you. Where? But then things were left. Once God removed from the picture, I don't give a damn how much power someone got. Once God removed from the picture, it all goes left. You hear me? You can be the president. If God ain't any damn it, it's all going left. As you see, 
in the marriage. <laughs> Where you can have a high position, high title, but if God ain't at the base of what you got going on, if he ain't the 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 the, the, uh, the cornerstone, everything is with everything that is what that's being built on. If it ain't being built on God, damn, it's, it's all going to ruin waste. You're just wasting your damn time. You can have 50, 100 years worth of success. <laughs> that success ain't success at all. It's actually failure. <laughs> you think you should see him doing something, building this, building that. You're just wasting your damn time. <laughs> all right. If God ain't at the bottom of it, you're wasting your time. You see what I'm saying? But at one point in time, the Roman Catholic Empire was the strongest empire of the world. Why? Because Jesus Christ was at the base of it. Rome, it was a it was a Roman emperor named Constantine the Great who converted to Christianity. Uh, God gave him a sign in the sky. You hear him? I'm telling you. And he won his battle. He was he was losing, but God gave him a sign and he won. And he converted. He, he said if he win, he gonna attribute the victory to the to the God of the Christians. And he won. And he, he was so man. That's a great story right there. With uh, Constantine the Great died. Then another pope came and took in. And then you get that's where we get the medieval ages, <laughs> where the medieval age, y'all heard something about the medieval ages, where, where that's when a lot of stuff, BS started happening. They separated from God, the, the Roman Catholic Church. They believe in something else now. But uh, Egypt, at one point in time, God was at the base of it. You hear me? That's why it was so great. Yeah, I'm telling you. They don't tell you this. I'm, yeah, they don't. Joseph was in Egypt. You can I, they don't tell. They don't talk about these records. You hear what say that? We know about Egyptian mythology and this and that. Horus, Seth, and all the rest of them cats and the rest of them. But they don't talk about when Joseph was in Egypt and what happened when Joseph was there. All uh, right, yeah, it's in the Bible. <laughs> but you don't find those records. They they don't. Where right, I'm quite sure that there is a record somewhere, but it's probably burnt up. Like I said, if anything, it probably would have been in the library of Alexandria. All right, but they burnt that up. It's, it's some scrolls. Y'all ever see that movie National Treasure? When that that girl, that that, that that white girl, she was uh, when they found that treasure, uh, they there was some scrolls right there. They, listen, I, I know somebody who's seen that damn movie, and then that that the girl said uh, these scrolls from the library of Alexandria. You see what I'm saying? Word. You see what I'm saying? Word. But anyway, if there is a record, it'd probably be in that library, which been burnt up, but there's still some scrolls around. But yeah. At one point in time, the whole world came to Egypt to get food from Joseph. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and the whole verse, uh, verse fifty-seven, and all the world <laughs> came to Egypt <laughs> to buy to buy grain <laughs> from Joseph <laughs> because the fam was so severe everywhere. All right, I love that. I'm, I'm stopping. I'm stopping at that. <laughs> hey, God bless you. I think that's super cool, man. <laughs> all right. Now talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know a lot about Egypt. This and then, we, 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 we all we we understand the BS parts of Egypt. You know what I mean? What they want us to know, tell us nothing. They tell us the BS and this and that. At one point in time, God was at the base of Egypt. Yeah, our Father in heaven. Yeah, and how was that? He said Joseph was in Egypt. Yeah, I love that. Hundred percent facts. Hundred percent facts. But when you when you remove God out the picture. And stuff go left. You hear me? Where? Stuff go left really fast. Where, the, where are the Egyptians now? In the, in the sea? They drowned. They dead. Where? They fed. Where? The, another pharaoh came. You see what I'm saying? Where, where are all the people at? You tell me. You, we can go, you can go to Egypt and look at the pyramids. Where are the people at? Where? The people who built the pyramids. Them. Where are they at? They went left. Once you remove God out of the picture and start and get carried away with other stuff, it go left really fast. <laughs> you go, you can go see that for your damn self. <laughs> Where the people at? <laughs> and the sea, <laughs> dead. You see? Yeah, where? <clears throat> I, I like this story. I'm getting off here though. God bless y'all. Y'all keep on asking the Lord for the Holy Spirit. He gonna give it to you. It's the Holy Spirit leading the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus is going to lead us to be home with our Father in heaven and get up out of here. You did? Until then, man. I'm going to keep on praying for y'all. Y'all keep on praying for me, too. And I will see y'all again. Amen.